Good morning. Welcome to St. James Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Andrew. It's good for us to gather together as this community of worshipers here at St. James. A number of things I'd like to lift up in regards to announcements. Um, the fifth Sunday servant branch you'll see is still hanging outside in the gathering space. And so if you would feel so moved to take one of the leaves from the branch or from the basket below before leaving here this morning, that would be wonderful. All of the collections for this month will go towards the St. James Early Learning Center. We'll continue with our midweek fellowship and worship nights this Wednesday. So we'll gather downstairs in the dining hall at 515 for soup and bread, and then come upstairs to the worship space at 630. Um, our preacher for this week is Jim Flanagan, so come out and support Jim. Some of you, we've just kind of figured this out, some of you might have received an email that deals with our church directories that we did about a year ago, an access code, I'm seeing some heads nodding for that. It is a legitimate email, um, and so when you go into our computer stuff here at the church for the church directory app, so the app that you would download on your computer or your phone, there's a little button that you can click that will send out that code that's very close to another button that you would click for updates or something like that. So the access code is legit. It's not a spam email or anything like that, just so that you're aware of that. And then the last announcement that I have for this morning is that next Sunday is Palm Sunday. We'd really love to have you join us here for that. Um, and at our 1045 service, we will celebrate through our water life service. I invite you now to stand as you are able for our order of confession and forgiveness. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who gathers us in the wilderness to redeem us, anoint us, and make us new. Amen. In these 40 days, let us be honest, confess our sin, and receive God's promise of mercy. God at the margins, we have wandered far from your home. Again and again, we lose our way. We turn inward, afraid of the world around us. We forget that you have saved your people before and promised to do so again. Do not remember the deeds of our past, but turn our faces toward the future, where your forgiveness is sure, your welcome is clear, and your love overflows. Amen. Like a hen who gathers her chicks, God embraces you in tender care. Like manna in the desert, God feeds you with surprising mercy. Like a loving parent, God runs to meet you again this day, forgiving your sins for the sake of Christ, leading you from death into life.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Creator God, you prepare a new way in the wilderness, and your grace waters our desert. Open our hearts to be transformed by the new thing you are doing, that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love given to all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down. They cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the desert, rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Philippians. Paul writes, If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, 
but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii? and the money given to the poor. He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the, the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. O okay, so we just heard a story um, in the Gospel, and it was a story about a, a dinner. Do you remember? Did you hear that? Yeah. yeah? It wasn't chicken filet, <laughs> but it did tell us for sure. But I don't know. Now, tell me though. Lazarus was there. Did, did anybody, anybody know anything about Lazarus? Who's Lazarus? That's what I'm, I'm asked you first. <laughs> oh, Liam, do you know uh, anything about Lazarus? Okay, anybody? So he was a man who was, he had been dead and Jesus raised him back to life. And so he was there at the meal. And that's kind of neat that there was a person who... Uh, so he was brought him back to life, yep. So, he rose from, well, sort of, like Jesus. I don't know. Okay, now, okay, so that's the story. There, there's a meal, and Lazarus is there. There's a lot of people there. Jesus is there, and this man who Jesus brought back to life is there, okay? So, there's a lot happening in that meal. So, let's talk about popcorn. What's popcorn? Okay, the, the, let's just listen to the questions, and then see if you can answer them. So, do you, do you make popcorn at your house? You make popcorn for movies. Okay, but when you make it in your house, what happens? Tell me what happens. It pops into little popcorn, but what is it in? Is it in? Is it? It's in a bag. It's in a bag. Okay, so it's in a bag. What else do we know about? So when you have popcorn in a bag, what do you do with it then? Yes. Put it in the microwave, and then you turn the microwave on, and then what happens? That's what I want to know. The kernels pop. So my question is, how do you know that the kernels are popping? Because you hear heat makes them get hotter and pop. Okay, okay. Well, here's one. So you can hear it. What else? How else do we know it? Yes. You can see it. The, the bag begins to get real big. So you can hear it. You can see it. What else? You can smell it. You can smell it. Oh, my goodness. Anything else? You can, 
You can touch it while you better not if it's in the microwave. Oh. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it till it comes out. Yes. You can taste it eventually. So, so this popcorn's in the microwave and it's popping and you can hear it, you can see it, you can smell it, and you can taste it later. Okay. So there's a whole lot of stuff going on inside that bag. You can't see inside the bag. But you know that there's a lot of stuff yeah, going on. It is closed shut. You can't see it. So now, this is why I want. Yes, um, Aiden. Like like kind of like all the bees returning to the hive and making stuff. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of stuffs going on inside, but you can't see it. Yes, so, okay. Okay, let me, I'll, I'll ask the next question. How's that? Okay. You guys are asking good questions, but I'll just ask one more, okay? So, there's a lot of stuff going on inside this popcorn bag. So, my question is, here Jesus is at, at, at this meal, and there's a lot of stuff going on. So, here, here in your life, in your life, how do you know when Jesus, when there's a lot of stuff going on with Jesus? in your life? How do you know that? That's a harder question. You can feel it. How do you feel it? Where do you feel it? In your heart that you know Jesus is doing something. Oh, well, that's good. Anything else? Uh, Any? Yes. Your heart, your Jesus is in your heart. Jesus is in your heart, yeah. Anything else though? Anything, any other ways that we know that Jesus is working He is. But here's a little, I can give you a clue. So maybe it's a little bit like the popcorn. Like, you know something's happening, but you can, sometimes you can hear it when Jesus is working. What, what, how, what, might, how, what might we hear? Uh, we hear because we got eardrops. I know, but how would we know it? Uh, because it's pop. How about with Jesus, with Jesus? Yeah, with Jesus. Sometimes if we talk to each other really nicely, that can be Jesus working, right? And sometimes if the things we do, if the things we do nice and we do them all the way through, we know that can be Jesus working. So there's a lot of ways that Jesus works in our lives, okay? And some of it, I think, is kind of like we can see it, we can hear it. Popcorn bag? Popcorn bag, yep, yep. Think about it. Next time you have popcorn at your house. Think about Jesus, okay? Okay, so can we think about Jesus working in our lives and we can see it, we see Jesus, we can hear it. And a lot of it has to do with, but a lot of it has to do with how we treat each other, okay? Okay, so why don't we pray? Okay, can we pray? And we can all pray together. Okay, dear God, thank you for bringing us here today. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you, Thank you for loving us. For loving us. Thank, you Thank you for teaching us how to love. Amen. Okay. Thank you. So, and I'm not talking about the children's sermon right now, but I've done some pretty foolish things in my life. <laughs> Like the time I was at the beach, and I went out early in the morning to get a newspaper, and when I ran into the convenience store, I left my car running, only to find that when I came back, the doors were locked, and I didn't have another key. And so I had to walk at least a mile to find a policeman, and because I was not parked in this policeman's jurisdiction, I paid him $25 to get into my car. It was an expensive newspaper that morning. Or with my first car, when I was in college, you know, I didn't have much money to buy a new battery, and so most often I had to start the car by, you know, pushing it down a hill, <laughs> and it was, a, it was a straight stick. And so you push it down the hill, and then you jumped in quickly, and you like moved it from third gear into first so that the engine would, would catch. Well, one day I didn't quite jump quick enough 
and the car got away from me. <laughs> now, luckily for me, at the bottom of the hill, there was a little curb. There weren't any cars along the way. And so it ran into this curb before it hit the bushes and the trees that were at the bottom. But do you, know you know what was really lucky for me? Is that there was no one at the top of the hill with a smartphone <laughs> taking a video of this whole college student shenanigans. So here I am, confessing these things many years later. I definitely could take more than one mulligan for some of the foolish things that I did at a younger age. But you know what I'm really thankful for? I'm thankful for the internet gods, for waiting until I was an adult before working their magic with creating things like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat and whatever all those other things are that are coming at us from the future. Growing up is hard enough without the entire world seeing and commenting on every foolish choice that we make in our lives. Now let's face it, Kids and adults alike, we all do foolish things. But in our social media-heavy, attention-hungry, smartphone-dependent world, the stakes seem to be infinitely higher. Apologies, regrets, proportional punishment are too often not quite enough. Nearly everything we do these days is available for public consumption, and we hold that power right in the palm of our hands. And too often, although it's good, good technology, too often we use that power to shame each other over and over again for foolish decisions that we all sometimes make. So I try to understand why people are driven to punish each other in public. And I suspect that a lot of people resort to public shaming out of anger, many times out of frustration, the desire to call out certain behaviors, the need sometimes simply to feel validated for what we believe. So, I'm thinking about shaming in light of the gospel reading that we just heard a few moments ago. Now, I'm absolutely pretty sure that shaming was not the reason why John chose to include this story in his gospel. But put yourself at that dinner where Jesus was. Try to put yourself there. At the dinner, at the table, and tell me what you hear when Judas begins to reprimand Mary in public for what she is doing. How do you hear that if you were there? Let's go to the story for a minute. It's six days before Passover. Jesus stops in to see his good friends, Mary, Martha, Lazarus, before he enters Jerusalem for the last time. It wasn't too long before this when Jesus had been there and raised his good friend, 
back to life. And now today Jesus is back in their home in Bethany. And this time for a dinner, we are told, that was given specifically for him. His three good friends are there, and it seems as if his disciples are with him also. From the, from the previous chapter, just a few verses before we started reading, we know that the temple police are hot on his trail. After all, Jesus has been pretty much of a nuisance all along, but then when he raises Lazarus from the dead, lots more people start following after him. And now, with the Passover less than a week away, something has to be done for this upstart, rabble-rousing, miracle worker, king of the Jews. And so I think Jesus knows that his days are numbered, but he wants to be with his friends. We realize Mary of Bethany is totally attentive to Jesus in this time of crisis. Mary comes to the center of the room with a clay jar in her hands. She kneels at Jesus' feet, breaks open the jar, and we are told the fragrance just totally envelops the entire house. And then she does four things which an honorable woman would never do in public. She loosens her hair in a room filled with men. She pours perfume. She rubs Jesus' feet. And then she wipes the perfume off with her hair. Now, from our 2,000-year vantage point, I think too often we hear this story and we very easily incorporate it into our nicely sedated understanding of faith. I'm going to ask you not to do that today because the truth is, this is bizarre, over-the-top kind of conduct. I mean, this is excessive. This is absolutely foolish, as Judas is quick to remind the people in the room. But truth be told, this narrative is classic Mary of Bethany with Jesus, offering the very best that she has to offer, shutting out all others in the room, concentrating fully and offering healing to one whose body will soon be bruised and cast aside. Now commentators all remind us that this entire story points to Jesus' death. Everyone in the room knows, they knew, that the only person who gets their feet anointed is a dead person. They all knew that. And so yes, Mary used this, this precious ointment that could have fed a poor family for a year. Absolutely and a foolish action to those who were sitting there and watching. But if in John's Gospel, everything we see has a deeper meaning, then we can't get stuck at the very place where Judas got stuck. Because if in this text, Mary's anointing points us to the death of Jesus, then this story is, in fact, a story about the excessiveness of God's mercy and the extravagance of God's love made real in his dying. And so if Lent and Holy Week and Good Friday and Easter Sunday, if they all are to inspire us to want to learn how to love more deeply, then this is the challenge that we hear today. How to love intimately and how to love together.
how to truly allow love to be our motivator and not just when we are with like-minded friends, but just as importantly, when we see someone do something that we consider foolish. I mean, love is the superstar of, is a superstar virtue of virtues, but I think it's also the most watered down virtue. Too often for us, Love loses its audacity to reach beyond boundaries and lines that we've created. The great love story that today's gospel points us toward, which we will be hearing, especially in these next two weeks, challenges every interaction and our every encounter with each other in the very midst of our own brokenness, showing us how to create room for redemption and God's healing. The love we see in the death of Jesus is the call, is the call never to abuse the divine spark found in every human person. So today, let us allow this gospel to remind us and encourage us and prepare us for the abundant possibility of God's love in our lives to reshape the very core of our being, most especially in the midst of the challenges of our highly charged culture and at the very same time the reality of both our fragile and gifted lives. This is what we call salvation, God's love working within each one of us. Amen.
whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Seeking the grace, mercy, and love of Almighty God, we offer our prayers for the Church, for people in need, and for all of creation. God of resurrection and new life, inspire your Church to reconsider what makes us holy. When we focus on our own self-righteousness or others' sin, show us Christ's faithfulness. Through Christ's suffering, death, and merit, may we inherit eternal life. Hear us, O God. Whenever destruction by flood, famine, or fire has devastated land and lives, cause green shoots to spring up, giving hope and vision for your promised future. Thank you for the change of seasons and the signs of spring all around us. Hear us, O God. Where nations are embroiled in chaos and unrest, cut a clear path for your people to follow. Lead us in ways of reconciliation and foretell the new things you prepare. Make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Hear us, O God. Wipe away the tears of those who weep under the burdens of hard labor and despair, especially Kay, Helen, John, Don, Lonnie, Sam, Bob, Nancy, Marie Louise, Becky, Sam, Mary, Nikki, Kelly sisters, Haley, Joe, Jennifer, Tommy, Tina, Courtney, Brandy, Logan, Addison, and Karen. We pray for those we name before you. Restore them and bring them into the joy of your presence. Hear us, O God. Permeate this world with the sweet perfume of Christ's anointing. Just as Mary anointed Jesus in Bethany thousands of years ago, help us continue to love the church and care for all people. Fill your people with such gratitude that it spills over into service of those who are poor or in any need. We rejoice with Caroline Lisa McKnight Lehman, who was baptized and received First Communion yesterday. We rejoice in the birth of Eleanor Rose Wirtz, born to Deanna Weatherly and Troy Wirtz. Hear us, O oh God. We are thankful for those who are called to work in our congregation. We pray especially for pastors Mike and Andrew, Tim and Barbara, Jessica, Tom, Kim, Karen, Katie, Debbie, Lisa, and the staff of St. James Early Learning Center. Bless them in their ministry and work and give them the strength and guidance to continue to fulfill your will every day. Hear us, O God. Accompany those for whom death draws near. We pray for the family and friends of Ann Fritz and Dorothy Vasilenko and Ed Cole, who recently entered your eternal kingdom. Bring us with all your saints to receive the abundance of heavenly glory through the covenant Christ sealed in his death and resurrection. Hear us, O God. Reveal your will as you receive our prayers and conform our ways to your ways through the saving work of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
Let us pray. Generous God, you feed us with the harvest of the land, and you provide for our every need. Receive our gifts of money, imagination, and labor, and transform them into a feast that welcomes all. In Jesus Christ, our host and guest, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and to prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join there in ending hymn. O God, creator of our wilderness world, O God, savior of the lost, O God, comforter of the sick and suffering, we give you thanks for your everlasting might. We glorify you for your covenant of mercy. For 40 days you cleanse the earth with the waters of the flood. For 40 days you illumine Moses with the words of your law. For 40 years you fed your people with manna from heaven. You became truly human in Jesus, our brother. For 40 days with fasting and prayer, you renounced the power of the devil. On the night before he died, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We extol his life. We lament his death. We celebrate his resurrection. Transform us, O God, with your lively spirit. Make this food into manna for our journey, the body and blood of your Son, Grant us with the Ninevites 40 days of repentance. Teach us your words of wisdom and justice. Renew the whole earth with baptismal grace. And at the last, lead all your pilgrim people through our deserts to your Easter garden. To you, O God, creator, savior, comforter, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be our worship and praise, adoration and thanksgiving, now and forever.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Tender and merciful one, at your feast you fed us who brought nothing, turning our emptiness into joy. Filled with your abundant grace, send us now to be ministers of reconciliation, mending broken hearts, working for justice, and striving for peace among all people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God who fills the creation with abundance, Christ who spreads his arms in forgiveness, Holy Spirit who draws ever near to us, bless you and bring you to life everlasting. Amen. Marked with the cross of Christ, go forth to love and serve the Lord and care for the poor. Thanks be to God.